The Mandela Effect refers to a strange phenomenon where large groups of people remember an alternate history. Events that never happened are clear in their memories, and often similar or exactly the same as others affected by this effect. The cause of the Mandela Effect remains unknown. Number 5 The Mandela Effect that started the discussion about this strange phenomenon surrounds the man that the effect was named after, former South African President Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela became famous due to his activism and his work to end apartheid in South Africa. He was part of the African National Convention and led the first African-led law firm in South Africa with his new law partner Oliver Tambo. In 1964, he and other activists were convicted of sabotage and sentenced to life in prison. For the next 26 years, Mandela was in prison. During that time, Mandela was held in many different prisons, including the notorious Robben Island. He and other political prisoners participated in hunger strikes, and at one point, Mandela contracted tuberculosis due to the conditions. As well as general anti-apartheid protests, there were protests specifically for Mandela's release. Finally, in 1990, he and other political prisoners were released. In 1994, he was elected the first black president. He was 76 years old but had an active calendar, meeting politicians, dignitaries, and business people from around the world. Even after retiring from politics, he remained in the public eye. He continued his activism and charity work and helped campaign for the 2010 FIFA World Cup to be held in South Africa. In 2013, a film about his life was released, adapted from the autobiography he wrote in 1994. Just one month after its release, Mandela passed away due to a respiratory infection. This was a surprise to many people, who distinctly remember him passing away decades earlier. A large part of what Mandela achieved occurred after he was released from prison, but for many individuals that never happened. Instead, Mandela passed away in prison at some point in the 1980s. What he passed away from isn't clear, but some remember it being down to the hunger strike. Others believed it was some kind of illness, likely tuberculosis. His passing had a major impact on the anti-apartheid movement. He was now a martyr. There were riots in the streets which made appearances on news broadcasts around the world. Mandela's widow, Winnie, made a moving speech. For some reason, his funeral was also televised and watched around the world. People recalled hearing about his passing while at school, so it was strange for them to then hear about his passing again as an adult. The first time this Mandela effect was noticed was actually before his passing. In 2009, paranormal researcher Fiona Broom wrote about her memory of Mandela passing away. At this point, he was alive and well and still in the public eye. It can be an easy mistake to believe an elderly celebrity has already passed away, especially if they're from a different country and don't appear in the news outside that country very often. But what makes Mandela's false passing so significant is just how many people distinctly remembered it happening. It wasn't a case of them simply assuming that someone they hadn't heard about for a while had passed away. People questioning this Mandela effect often ask why Mandela was well known and why his funeral would be televised if he passed away while in prison. Mandela was known outside South Africa in the 1980s. A bust of the Freedom Fighter was placed in London in 1985 and there were various protests around the world fighting for his release. If he'd passed away in the 80s, his name would likely still be known around the world. He probably wouldn't have remained as famous as he is today, though. It's also unlikely that his funeral would have been televised, as he was still seen as a dangerous criminal at the time. One explanation for this Mandela effect is that people mixed up Mandela and other political prisoners. In 1977, Stephen Baiko was arrested and attacked by police officers. He passed away due to the wounds. His passing did cause riots, which people have associated with the false passing of Nelson Mandela. His funeral was also televised. In 1981, Irish Republicans went on a hunger strike, which led to the passing of 10 prisoners, including Bobby Sands. It's possible that this memory was also associated with Mandela. Interestingly, there's a separate conspiracy theory that states Mandela passed away in the 80s. This theory differs from the Mandela effect, though, as Mandela was allegedly replaced by a lookalike, 
who then went on to become the first black president of the country. The Nelson Mandela Foundation put out a statement refuting this conspiracy, and there's no evidence at all that it was true. In this world, Mandela definitely lived to see his release from prison and went on to spend two more decades influencing South Africa's politics and public life and inspiring people around the world. But perhaps in another world, it was the people who were inspired by his martyrdom that went on to lead the post-apartheid South Africa. Number 4 For the most part, the Mandela Effect seems to impact relatively small things. There are subtle changes to names or logos. At most, the life of one person might be significantly different. But some believers in the Mandela Effect believe that the entire world has been changed, quite literally. The world map has gone through a lot of iterations over the thousands of years humans have been making maps. Even today, when almost every landmass on the planet has been mapped and explored, the world map has changed slightly. Today, those changes are mostly due to projections. It's impossible to accurately portray the 3D world in a 2D format. Most people know that landmasses near the poles are stretched out more than those near the equator. Some more recent maps have tried to correct for that, meaning there might be some slight differences in the sizes of northern landmasses in new maps. But the changes attributed to the Mandela Effect go far beyond that. For many, the location of New Zealand is wrong. When looking at the globe of the Earth today, you might find New Zealand to the southwest of Australia. The two islands are so isolated that they're often left off of world maps entirely. It wasn't until around 1300 that humans even arrived, and it's recognized as the last significantly large and habitable place that humans ever settled. Every year, Auckland is the first major city to ring in the new year. But that hasn't always been the case, at least in the minds of some affected by the Mandela Effect. Where exactly New Zealand belongs differs. Some believe New Zealand should sit further north, either to Australia's northeast where the Solomon Islands can be found on the globe today, or at the same latitude as the north of the country, roughly where New Caledonia lies. It's unlikely that people have mistaken these islands for New Zealand, as they're much smaller than their southern neighbor and don't have their distinctive shape. Interestingly, the landmass of Zealandia does stretch up to the same latitude as New Caledonia. Zealandia is often referred to as Earth's eight continent. The landmass is almost entirely underwater, with only the islands of New Zealand rising high enough to be dry land. It's possible that in this other world, the more northern area of Zealandia was home to the highlands. Others believe it belongs directly below Australia, beneath the island of Tasmania, or to the west of the country. On today's globe, there's nothing to the west of Australia, and only Tasmania sits between Australia and Antarctica. New Zealand is far from the only thing out of place, though. Some believe that Australia itself is too far north, and should be closer to Antarctica. The entire continent of South America is also out of place for many. It can be surprising to learn that most of South America is east of the United States, rather than directly below. Most people chalk this discrepancy up to not paying much attention to the continent, and assuming that South would be directly below its northern counterpart. But others are certain that South America used to be thousands of miles further west. The layout of Central America has apparently changed to address this difference. The landmass of Asia has mostly stayed the same, though some believe there used to be some kind of body of water between India and Pakistan. But the country of Mongolia is a surprise to many. While Mongolia has been under the influence of China or even part of the country for centuries, it declared independence in 1911 and became fully independent in 1945. There's a region of China called Inner Mongolia, but this is distinct from the country of Mongolia. However, according to some, the entirety of Mongolia was still part of China, at least until the world maps suddenly changed due to the Mandela Effect. The most puzzling of these changes is the disappearance of a landmass at the top of the world. Unlike the South Pole, there is no large landmass at the top of the world. There's only a normal amount of sea ice in the area, though this shrinks in the summer. It's possible for submarines to travel directly beneath the ice at the North Pole and emerge on the other side, but in some worlds there was apparently some landmass at the North Pole. It played an important role in scientific research. And it was here, rather than the South Pole, that the barbershop pole marking the geographic North Pole could be found.
Number 3 Billions of people around the world follow the teachings of the Bible in some form or another. For many, it's an incredibly important part of their lives, giving guidance on how to live, how to tackle problems, and what to expect from the world. Even those that don't believe the Bible is the literal Word of God believe that the messages and stories contained within the Old and New Testaments have important meanings and morals. But many are concerned about the way the Bible has changed over the years. Of course, for a book that's existed for thousands of years, there have been many changes over the years. The original books of the Bible were written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. Translations, even between modern languages, can lead to meanings changing slightly, let alone between ancient languages and modern English. Other changes include accidental transcription errors in an era where new copies of the Bible were written by hand. If one scribe accidentally missed out a verse, it would be hard to spot in a time before mass communication. There have even been instances of verses being accidentally added in. Some changes are more intentional, either to help explain the meaning to a new audience, or because a better ending for a story was wanted. Most of these changes can be traced back through the years. We have copies of the Bible dating back hundreds and even thousands of years. Scholars can go back and compare these old versions to those currently taught in churches around the world. Many of these differences are noted in modern Bibles but some changes aren't like the others. There's no evidence for the change at all, with the original version only existing in the minds of people affected by the Mandela Effect. The image of a lion and a lamb together can often be seen in religious imagery and in cultures impacted by Christianity and Judaism. It's supposed to represent an era where predators and prey live together in harmony. In Christianity, it has an added meaning with both the lion and the lamb representing Jesus at various points in his story. But for many, the image specifically refers to a verse in the Old Testament. Many remember Isaiah chapter 11 verse 6 as reading, The lion shall lie with the lamb. It was shocking for many when they went back and looked at that text again. In the King James Version of the Bible, the verse reads, The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and the little child shall lead them all. The King James Version went on to influence most other English language versions of the Bible, so those versions also carry the line as the wolf and the lamb. Even those that weren't influenced by the King James Version have the animal listed as a wolf. Going back further, the Codex Sinaiticus is one of the earliest and most complete versions of the Bible. It was written in Greek sometime in the 4th century and is the oldest known copy of the New Testament. It also contains the majority of the Old Testament and some Apocrypha books. This version of the book, when translated into English, reads, and a wolf is added after a lamb. Like in the later versions, the lion is mentioned later in the verse, as well as other animals. This may seem like a small change, but the lion and the wolf are predator animals. If the verse is simply about predators and prey living in harmony, the meaning doesn't change. But for many, the animals have symbolic meanings. The lion and the lamb both represent Christ, but the lamb can also be seen as humanity. Some see the wolf as representing the devil and believe this change is sinister. There are many other small changes. Some can be attributed to pop culture filling in the gaps where the Bible itself is more vague. This could be the case with the apple. In the Bible, the fruit that Adam and Eve eat in the Garden of Eden isn't named. But another change that people can't really explain is the name of God. God has many different names in the Bible, but one that many people believe is only newly introduced is jealousy. Exodus chapter 34, verse 14 in the King James Version reads, For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. Unfortunately, this book is missing from the Codex Sinaiticus, but other versions of the Bible and the Torah also had this verse with God's name as Jealous or Jealous One. While it's only mentioned once, people find it strange that they've never noticed this before. It seemed like the sort of thing they would have remembered as children, simply because it's so strange. Many believe the line simply reads, For the Lord is a Jealous God. It's easy to remember or misread a book like the Bible, especially as it's not meant to be read from cover to cover but many find these differences too much to be explained by misremembering. With the Bible being one of the most influential pieces of literature, 
it's creepy to imagine it significantly changing and nobody being able to notice. Number two. When Billy Graham passed away in 2018, he became the fourth private person in US history to lie in honor in the Capitol building. He was honored by presidents past and present, and more than 400 news media representatives were present for his funeral, which was broadcast around the world. For many people, especially those outside the US or not familiar with evangelical Christianity, this was the first time they'd ever heard of the mega preacher. For others, the whole scene was a little too familiar. Graham started his rise to fame in the 1940s, not long after he felt a calling from God to become a preacher and spread the message of the Gospels. He conducted what he called crusades, which were large gatherings where he would preach and ask people to come forward and accept Jesus. The gatherings started out in tents and weren't unfamiliar to small American towns. But Graham managed to pull in greater crowds and took his crusades to big cities. He sold out stadiums, traveled around the world, and insisted on racial integration at his meetings. On top of his charisma, he used all the mass media tools to his advantage. His rise to fame started with the radio show, but he would later broadcast his sermons via TV. He claimed it wasn't mass evangelism, but personal evangelism on a mass scale. He preached to billions of people during his lifetime and was even permitted to preach in countries where religion is frowned upon, like China and North Korea. His fame put him in touch with politicians, royalty, and celebrities. Over the years, he developed friendships with many of the US presidents from both parties. Lyndon B. Johnson was the first to associate himself with the famous preacher. But Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, both George Bush Sr. and Jr., and Bill Clinton all had good relationships with Graham. He spoke at Clinton's inauguration and was invited by Bush Sr. to stay at the White House. The president he had the best relationship with, though, was Richard Nixon. Though his image was tainted slightly when the Watergate tapes were released, Graham remained relatively popular. As he was a man with as much influence and popularity, it made sense for his passing to be all over the news and a popular topic of conversation. One internet user remembered how their older, conservative relatives wouldn't stop talking about his passing. The problem was, he remembered this happening in 2016, two years before Graham actually passed away. This user wasn't alone. Some believed he passed away in 2004, while others thought it happened in the 90s. One person distinctly remembered it occurring in 2012 and commenting about how Graham managed to avoid the end of the world that was supposedly going to occur that December. Some people even remembered him passing away only to hear about him passing away a few years later. Some people even remembered him passing away only to hear about him passing away again a few years later and then hear about it again when he did eventually pass away for real in 2018. Descriptions of his funeral were all very similar. Like in real life, it was televised, but there were many distinct differences from what actually happened in 2018. It occurred in a church with lots of white decorations around. The chairs had some blue fabric over them. Many former presidents were in attendance and Clinton gave a eulogy. In reality, the ceremony was held in a tent outside of a church, which was a nod to the crusades that started Graham's career. Only Donald Trump attended the service, though Clinton and other presidents attended public viewings of the casket. There wasn't a white theme at the actual funeral, though the pallbearers did wear white flowers. This was clearly a different event from the one people remember. Some have suggested that a televised tribute to Graham years earlier and the funeral of his wife may have been mixed together in people's memories, causing them to believe it had been Graham's funeral, but others are less certain. While there are a few Mandela Effect cases of people passing away more than once, it's interesting that people previously recognized a Mandela Effect that occurred only for it to then happen again. It was as if the timeline had changed or been reset multiple times. If the Mandela Effect is a real phenomenon, getting to the bottom of this particular case could be extremely important in figuring out what's going on. Number 1. For many people, the answer to the Mandela Effect lies with CERN and the Large Hadron Collider. But CERN is also the subject of its own Mandela Effect. There are two general theories about what causes the Mandela Effect. Some believe it's evidence that we're living in a simulation. In this case, the Mandela effect would be caused by the programmers going back and changing that affected thing. 
The other theory is that it's evidence for alternate dimensions. Taking the original Mandela Effect case as an example, in our universe, Nelson Mandela survived his imprisonment and became the president of South Africa. If the theory of parallel universes is correct, there may be another or even many other universes where Nelson Mandela passed away in prison. As these two universes are parallel, they could never touch or should even know about one another. But according to the theory, they do for some reason. Some people from one universe are transferred to the other, complete with all their memories from their original universe. This would explain why some people experience the Mandela effect and others don't, as well as why some experience it for some things and not for others. There are possibly infinite numbers of parallel universes in existence. In one universe, only one of the examples of the Mandela effect might be different to our own, while in others, many might be different. It's also a good reason for why people can't provide any evidence that the world used to be a different way. That evidence was left behind in their old universe. This leaves the question of how those parallel universes came together unanswered. For some, it's the result of some natural but strange force that humans have not yet discovered. For others, the answer lies on the border between France and Switzerland. CERN is the European Organization for Nuclear Research. It's most famous today for the particle accelerators. CERN currently has seven of these large accelerators. The round chambers use electric fields to increase the speed of atomic and subatomic particles, greatly increasing their energy. Magnetic fields steer the particles to keep them going around the circuit. These particles can reach close to the speed of light before being sent on a collision course with some other particle. These experiments help us to learn more about the building blocks of our universe. The most famous of these experiments is the Large Hadron Collider, the newest of the particle accelerators at CERN. In 2010, it was used to discover the Higgs boson, which is part of the system that gives some particles mass. While everything at CERN is very exciting for the field of subatomic physics, there are elements that could be seen troubling for the everyday person, who might not understand all the jargon surrounding the field. When the Large Hadron Collider was first operated, there were concerns that the high-energy exotic particles might cause micro-black holes. While these were possible in theory, they wouldn't cause any trouble. If a particle turned into a black hole, it would still only have the mass of that particle it wouldn't cause an end-of-the-world scenario. That didn't stop people from worrying about it, though. The fact that the Large Hadron Collider began operating around the same time that people started to notice the Mandela effect caused many people to associate the two events. The collider was dealing with an area of physics which could theoretically explain parallel universes. A theory was put forward that these experiments could have accidentally or even intentionally warped our own universe and connected with one another bringing the two timelines together. Scientists at CERN have ruled out this possibility. The fact is that subatomic particles from space hit our atmosphere with more energy than the particles in the accelerator. If this would have caused the Mandela effect, CERN is only adding to what had been happening naturally ever since the planet was created. This isn't the only conspiracy theory attached to CERN, though. For many, the logo itself was strange. The logo is supposed to resemble the collider, with a tangential line coming off a circle, but many believed it looked like three sixes combined. One problem with this theory is that it doesn't, or at least it doesn't in this universe. In our universe, the logo is two interconnected rings. One has a single tangential line coming off of it, while the other has four. It still resembles the colliders though. This is the logo CERN has had for most of its history, but some people remember a different logo with only the one circle and evenly spaced lines coming off of it. This may simply be remembering the diagrams which were used to allegedly prove the satanic meaning behind the symbol, or it may be a memory from another timeline. Interestingly, there's one version of this alternate logo which has been put forward as proof that there was a change at some point. The oldest version of this logo appears to trace back to a conspiracy theory website, but the site says nothing about the satanic meaning behind the logo, or make any mention of the logo at all. It seems unlikely that the Large Hadron Collider caused the Mandela Effect, but for many, it's as good of an explanation as any others that have been put forward. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell to keep up to date with all of our future uploads. But my name is Ty Knotts, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.